pleasure to see all of you here. I want to thank the MGM for hosting this event. This is a great, great property. Uh, the arena is fabulous. Uh, it's a real great privilege uh, to be here. Uh, before I talk about the main event, I'd like to talk about the undercard, because the undercard is really loaded. In addition to the main event, we have seven terrific fights, uh, which features some of the best fighters, up-and-coming fighters uh, in the world. Uh, first, in the first bout, we have uh, a young man who will be making his second professional fight. Uh, he's fighting here in Nevada, which allows fighters to fight as young as 17. His name is David Kaminsky, the Lion of Zion. And uh, uh, Australians know, and a lot of Australians here, uh, that uh, about Jewish fighters because uh, uh, General Monash led the Australian troops in the First World War, and many credit the Australian troops for winning that war. Uh, so David will be fighting his second fight. Uh, Gabriel Flores just became 18. He's been fighting for us for a year uh, in places like Nevada and Texas, which allows 17-year-olds to fight. His record is 7-0 and with five knockouts. He's a real up-and-comer. And we have a young man from Omaha, Nebraska, Steve Nelson. Steve, where are you? Yeah. yeah, Steve's record is 10 and 0. He's a light heavyweight. The light heavyweight division is loaded, but Steve will uh, hopefully in the near future uh, campaign for a world title. He's uh, trained and managed uh, by Bomac, right? You got. You know, right? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we have a young man from, he fights now out of Oxnard, California, but he's originally from St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, the hometown of uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, I, I asked Igis, uh, who sent him to you? Was it Vladimir or Donald? <laughs> he didn't know. But, but that... that <laughs> Tadashev is a hell of a fighter. He's 10-0, 140 pounds. He fights Starlies Perez, 33-3 uh, and 3, uh, for the NABF uh, Junior Welterweight title. And then we have a young man, pure American, who we're very, very proud of. He won the silver medal in the Rio Olympics. Uh, his record is now 6-0. Uh, he is a real up-and-comer. Everybody expects him to be a future star in the sport of boxing. Stand up, Shakur Stevenson. <laughs> and then we have a uh, uh, WBA world title eliminator in the welterweight division. It features two undefeated fighters. Uh, from Caracas, Venezuela, Frank Rojas, 22 wins, no defeats, 21 of those wins by knockout. And he fights uh, a young man who is undefeated, record of 26 wins, no defeats, 17 knockouts, the pride of Phoenix, Arizona, a young man who is looking to fight the winner of this fight if he is successful on Saturday night. Please welcome Jose Benavides, Jr. And finally, the co-feature event is a 10-round lightweight fight for the WBO Latino title, and it matches Antonio Moran of Mexico City, Mexico, a uh, record of 22 wins and two defeats, 
against the pride of Puerto Rico, Jose Pedraza, 23 wins, one defeat, 12 knockouts, a former champion. The winner of that fight, looking forward to challenging Ray Beltran, the WBO lightweight champion. So it's a terrific undercard, John. I mean, people should come as early as possible to see all the events. And then we have the feature fight of the evening, a, a matchup matching uh, the pride of Australia, the man who defeated Manny Pacquiao to win the WBO championship, a guy who's hard as nails, determined, uh, a real bulldog in the ring, uh, Jeff Horn, who fights against uh, the man who was the king of the lightweights at 135, the king of the junior welterweights at 140, won all the titles at 140, considered by many experts the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Terrence Bud Crawford of Omaha, Nebraska, in what should be a tremendous, tremendous fight. Now we're gonna hear from uh, a New Zealander who passes himself off as an Australian. Uh, he's gonna give his views on the title fight, Dean Lonigan. Dean? Thank you. I'm not an Australian, I'm an honorary Queenslander. The, uh, look, it was about four or five years ago that Glenn Rushton and myself sat down to talk about signing Jeff Horn to my company and uh, the career path we we're going to have. And, and Glenn had a very, very uh, big vision for Jeff. And, and vision one was that one day we're going to fill Suncorp Stadium with 50,000 people in a mega fight. And then we're going to go on and conquer the world. And uh, the first part of that equation we've managed to achieve. You know, we put together a fight thanks to Bob Arum and the uh, Queensland State Government and Brisbane City Marketing where we managed to bring one of the best fighters of all time down to Queensland in front of 51,000 and managed to uh, and take, you know, take away the belt. Now, there's a lot of people coming down for that fight. Bob Sheridan amongst them said, top rank haven't brought Manny here to lose, and that was true. They hadn't. And we knew that the top rank matchmakers had made a mistake in putting them in with Jeff Horn, and it turned out that that was the case. There's been a lot of talk in this fight in the lead-up to this thing, and we think that top rank have again erred, and uh, the matchmakers have put... Terence Crawford in with the wrong guy, and we're going to find that out on Saturday night. There's all sorts of reasons as to why we think that, and I guess it's going to play out on Saturday night, we're going to find out why. Terence and, and Bomek over there obviously have different ideas, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on Saturday night, because one of us is right. Dean, I have a question. This is Triple Crown Weekend, and I'm wondering uh, why you think you have a legitimate two-horse race here, and can you, your fighter, pull off the daily double by registering what would be monumental back-to-back -back upsets? Look, we think Jeff Horn is the biggest, stronger guy. We think he's the biggest, strongest welterweight in the division, full stop. He showed that against Manny Pacquiao. You know, if you weren't Teddy Atlas, you saw a fight where one of the all-time greats of the ring was thrown around like a rag doll. Jeff had some issues in round nine, but managed to come back and win round 10, 11, and 12 in what was a very courageous win. We think Jeff's bigger and stronger. We think he's got a very, we don't think, we know he's unorthodox. And no one that Terence has sparred with can match what Jeff Horn brings to the rings in being unorthodox. He's not the world's prettiest fighter, but he's very, very effective. For a long time, Jeff and uh, Glenn have been, they do a thing called broken rhythm pressure. And what that means is the pressure just keeps coming and coming and coming and the punch count just keeps going up and up and up. And we just think, you know, that Terence has come up too early and we think that uh, Jeff's going to take it out. Jeff's in the best shape we've ever seen him. A lot of the times, you know, I've been now promoting Jeff four or five years and a lot of the times Jeff's had to cut four, four and a half, sometimes five kilos to make weight. Now with a great dietitian, great exercise regime, we're only cutting a couple of kilos. So we think his strength is going to be in places that it's never been before. And uh, in terms of technical ability, mate, I'm a, I'm a student of the business of boxing. Glenn's a student of the actual boxing thing itself, but that's, that's our view. Thanks, Dean. Now it's time to get to the press conference's main event, which has something to do with the fighters, but it's the war of words between the two trainers involved. There's been a lot said, and it's escalated in the days leading to the fight. Uh, Glenn Rushton trains the champion, 
and Glenn, I was wondering if part of your strategy in being so aggressive with some of the verbiage is to try to get the challenger uh, mentally and maybe get him off his game plan and fight a more physical fight that might be in your favor. Is, is, is there psychological warfare going on there? Not really. You know, if we had something to say, I would say it. It's as simple as that. You know, we have no ill feeling towards the Crawford camp. And that applies to whether it's Brian or Terence themselves or any of their handlers. This is a fight. But if something happens, obviously we're a bit annoyed when the date changed. There was no evidence of any injury provided to us. We just heard of a bruised hand. As I said at the time, uh, you know, if Jeff said we were pulling out or postponing the fight because he had a bruised hand, I would expect to cop some flack from that. So naturally, because I, as I said, Jeff gets a bruised hand every second day of the week, so we naturally had something to say. I think that was warranted and they would expect a response of some kind. I think it was a valid response to, to say that we're disappointed, we're prepared, we're trained hard for April 14. So no, the, I don't think there's any real malice there. It's just, you know, things happen. Obviously, we make a comment. The media expect us to make a comment. We make a, a comment which we believe is warranted. I think it was warranted. I stand by that now, but as I said, we're looking forward to a great fight on Saturday night. This is a terrific bout, and I think the people are in for an absolute uh, brilliant night. We know how competitive your fighter is, but sometimes will can only take you so far. When you're fighting a fighter the caliber of Bud Crawford, who's a highly skilled ring technician who can box and punch, Tell us how Will can overcome that. Firstly, I think we've got to go a bit further back than just the Will. Just a little statistic here for what it's worth. Jeff's had 19 fights to date. And in those fights, if you look at the tally of the wins and losses of the people he's fought, okay, these are all the opponents that Jeff has fought. There's, they tally 401 wins, sorry, 411 wins and 101 losses. That's the first 19 that he's fought. Just get that in your mind. 411 wins, 101 losses. I added up Terence Crawford's first 19 fights. It was 175 wins and 178 losses. Now, in those opponents that Jeff has fought, 12 of them have been well drank. 12 of them. Okay, this, remember, this is a fighter who made the quarterfinals in the 2012 Olympics. The best effort by an Australian over 20 years. Okay, he was ranked number one with both the IBF and the WBO prior to fighting Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao and held both of those belts. Okay, the intercontinental in the IBF and the intercontinental in the WBO. So we're talking about a fighter here. He doesn't just have to rely on Will. He's a very, very competent, skillful boxer. Yes, his style may not be the silky smooth style we see from the very classy Terence Crawford, but Rocky Marciano wasn't that silky and smooth either. But look at his record. Okay, he was very effective, he had a great chin and he could hit like a mule. So can Jeff Horn. He has a great will and if it comes down to a battle of spirits, and I think at some stage in this fight we all get tested, I, I back Jeff's spirit. He has a terrific spirit and he's incredibly competitive. But it goes a lot deeper, John, than just Will. Thanks, Glenn. Cor of course, we must give equal time to Brian McIntyre, who has trained Crawford for his, for his entire career, has been friends with him since he was an amateur. They go way back. The man they call Bo Mac is not shy about expressing uh, why he has predicted that Bud Crawford will stop the very tough Jeff Horn in the latter rounds. And Bomack, we know it's a very tough bloke that's sitting two seats away from me. How is Bud going to prevent the fight from going to the judges' scorecards? Well, you just said it. He's going to stop him. And the reason why I say that is because I got all the confidence in the world in Terrence. I'm sure Glenn got all the confidence in the world with Jeff. But like my old trainer always told me, don't nothing beats ready but been there and back. I understand you've been there, Jeff, but we ready. I promise you that. 
Bomek, can you talk about the move to 147 and what that has done for Jeff, uh, done for Bud? I really only got one word to say. It's called the takeover. And Jeff just happened to be there to be the first victim. So you're predicting he's going to stop the champion? Again, I say it again. It's called the takeover. <laughs> when we move up to 147, and Jeff just have to be the one that's being the, the first victim. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bowman. No, no, no problem. Well, for more, more than a decade, Bud Crawford uh, has let his flashing fist do the talking in the ring. And very few fighters have done it better. Uh, Terrence, you've only fought once in the last 10 months. You're coming off this hand injury and you're moving up in weight class. Uh, I'm curious to know, do you feel stronger at the new weight? You feel like you're you've grown into being a welterweight and do you think the champion will be surprised by your punching power most definitely i feel he's going to be surprised um he's viewing me as a small welterweight and come fight night he's going to see otherwise i just feel like um that's good for him you know, he's coming in hungry and determined, and that makes for a good fight. And I'm going to be prepared for whatever he brings come Saturday. And he might get hurt. I, I will add to that. Um, Terrence could have been a welterweight, but we as a team felt that we wanted to take the full advantage of uh, the 35 and 40 as he was coming out the amateur, so he could have been a welterweight, but we're taking our time with this. Boxing is a, a marathon, it's not a sprint, and we're in it for the long haul. Terrence, Manny Pacquiao was all over Jeff in that ninth round of their title bout last summer, but he didn't get him out of there. And in the end, it cost him. Do you think you need to stop him? Listen, I'm not Manny Pacquiao, you know. Say it uh, again, Terrence. I'm bigger, I'm stronger, uh, I'm in my prime. Uh, and that's going to show come Saturday. Uh, a lot of people is comparing how he pushed around Pacquiao, but that's not me. You know, Pacquiao 5'5", five, five, I believe, 5'6". You know, I feel like, you know, you viewing that, and comparing the Gamboa fight when I got hurt to this fight. But I didn't see him get dropped. I didn't see him get rocked. Randall Bailey. You know what I mean? Correct me if I'm wrong. Hold up. I, I, I interrupt you. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. So we're going to see come Saturday night who's going who's to be getting rocked and dropped. Excellent point. You've, you've uh, said that Horn <laughs> fights, fights dirty, uses his head and his elbows. If he fights that way with you, how are you going to combat that? What are you going to do about it? We gonna see. I'm going to let the ref do his job, and I'm going to do my job. How do you overcome his will? You know, we know he's got a big heart. We know how skilled you are as a ring technician. How do you overcome that part of it, his will? Well, <laughs> I got strong will as well. Uh, pressure break pipes. You know, a lot of people came in the ring with me with strong will. And, you know, they left with their tail tucked in. So I'm willing to go in there and do the same with him. You know, um, this is what everybody been waiting on. Terrence Crawford to move up to 147 and 
I'm looking forward to putting on a great show come Saturday night. Thank you. Did you steal that line about pressure breaking pipes from Evander Holyfield? That's what he said before the Tyson hey, fight leading up to it. It is what it is. You know, it's the truth. You know, they've been doing a lot of talking, and here we are two days away, and there's really nothing else to say. You know, I do my talking in the ring. Work time, y'all. Work time, y'all. Work time, y'all. Thank you, Terrence. Finally, it's time to hear from the champion. Uh, a, a man who's believed he's not received the respect due after defeating Manny Pacquiao. Uh, I heard you say yesterday, Jeff, that you were surprised that you were the underdog going into this fight. How so? Um, look, I'm surprised I'm as big an underdog as I am for the fight. I'm not surprised that I am the underdog. Uh, Terence is a great fighter. He's um, pound for pound wiped out the light welterweight division and that's a tough division as well and um, I've made this mistake once before I underestimated a guy that was slightly lighter than me and I thought he was going to be easy work in the amateurs and he ended up knocking me down a couple of times. I won't be making that mis same mistake with Terence. I know he's going to be, he's put on the size, he's going to be a nice strong welterweight. I can't wait to get in there and Prove, prove the doubt is wrong. I know everyone thinks that I'm a, I've heard it before. I've heard I'm a chump. I've heard I'm a fraud um, of the welterweight division. I'm just there to prove everyone wrong. Are you of the opinion that unlike the Pacquiao fight, which was fought on your home soil before 50,000 uh, countrymen, that you need to stop Bud Crawford to retain your title? Look, that guarantees the win, obviously, if you, can, if you can knock the guy out. But if you search for it too much, that's when it doesn't come. So you can't, you can't just be looking for a knockout all the time. And i just got to fight the best fight I can and rely on um, just even scoring. I, I, I feel like back home it was even scoring, and I feel it will be the same here. Wondering how you've acclimated to the time change, the weather of Las Vegas and dealing with nerves and retaining your focus since you've been there. Let's talk a little bit about that. Look, it's a lot different here than back home, that's for sure. We just come out of our winter and it's reasonably cold for us, but um, it's hot and dry here. And um, yeah, we just took a little bit of time to acclimatize. Um, been here for a while now and I feel like um, I'm in rhythm, in good sleeping rhythm, good training rhythm. Everything's feeling good, weight's good. Um, I've got no complaints, so I'm, I'm ready for fight time in a couple of days. Are you concerned about fighting on U.S. soil and having to deal with a crowd that uh, could very well be pro-Crawford? No, because that's not under my control. I only worry about things that are under my control, and that's just myself and what I can do. Um, I know it could be pro Terence Crawford out there. I am on American soil, but... Um, Look, I've just got to fight my heart out, and that's all I can do. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Terrence, to everybody up on the dais. Thanks for everybody coming to this final press conference. Uh, for credentialed media, lunch is served at the media center, and we'll see you fight night. Thank you. <laughs>